understanding deer hair and working with deer hair sometimes can make you pull out your own hair. But first, you must understand the type of deer that you're working with. Take, for example, the Pacific Coast deer and a Rocky Mountain mule deer and the white-tailed deer. Each come from different parts of the country. Each have a different climate. And each fiber of the deer hair is determined by where the deer comes from. So you can't just reach up from a store and pick out a package and get the right type of hair unless you know what you're looking for. And we're going to try to teach you how to select the proper deer hair for your flies. We'll be discussing age, sex, and the time of year that the deer has been harvested. So let's investigate that by looking at each type of deer hair. Working with deer hair, you first must understand the fiber. Now let's take a look at this. Look at the black tips up here. That's nature's way of sealing a whole entire fiber. Now if you look at the bottom end, it's hollow and it transcends into the stiffer point here. Now, nature has sealed this so that the whole fiber does not absorb water. Now, we don't want our deer running around looking like a sponge. Now, the relationship between these tips and the base will determine the type of deer hair it is. Now, let's take a look at a different piece. Now, let's look at this. It's the same exact anatomy. We've got the black tips, but as you can see, the white of the, of the tips right here, look at that right there, it's not even. So you can see that there are long ones and short ones, and the whole hide is very, very uneven. Now we'll talk more about that unevenness in the upcoming segment. Now let's look at this particular piece right here. Look at this smaller, very thin band here, very dark tips. Look at the base down here, dark all the way. Now the base on this particular uh, fiber will not be hollow. It will be very silky. This is a white-tailed deer. First thing you'll notice about the white-tail is the thin hide. Now look at the difference between a mule deer. Look how much thicker the mule deer is. Obviously weather makes a big factor in the type of hair. First thing you'll notice about the uh, white tail. Look at this. Look how thin the fibers are. And they're very silky. You can tell by feeling the hair, squeezing it. It doesn't give. If you take one of them out, you can bend it over, even wrap a, a little thread around it and see how it flares. It's stiff. It's hard. Look, we'll pull on it, see? It's tough stuff. Well, immediately that brings to mind humpies and wolves. And you say, what about muddlers? Well, we're going to find out if we go back towards here some of the lighter hair, it's still very stiff. Feel it? Now, a lot will determine the age of an animal. The older the animal, the stiffer the hair is going to be. The younger, of course, a little softer. Tanning will soften up a lot of the hair. Now, this is tanned. The only trouble with untanned hair is it uh, tends to be a little difficult to work with. Uh, it's dirty, and you can pick up every pollen in the world. So I tend to like my hair tanned. Now let's look over here again on the white tail. Look at the bands. Look at this. It's more of a, a yellowish uh, color instead, or even a brown instead of a cream. Look at how stiff the tips are. Really stiff. Excellent wing material. As I mentioned before, excellent humpy hair. Now we have here a coastal deer. Kind of a combination between a mule deer uh, and an eastern white tail. A little bit hollower hair. Of course, the weather there is a little cooler. Look at this, real nice, nice coloration. And this particular hide has a mask. And we're ta talking about a Halloween mask, but a deer mask. Although that might be a very inventive uh, Halloween uh, costume. Might be the hit of the block. Now look right here. Look how stiff that is. Excellent colorations. Well, think about maybe some small humpies, 20s and 18s. Look how thin, see the little band right there? Look how small the band of white is. When you roll that over to tie a humpy, it'll make a beautiful little wing. Look over on the back side. Really nice hair. Look how even the band is. You can see the band here. When we're tying humpies and woof patterns, it's really important to have a good band. What does that mean when you have a nice band like that? It means the hair is even. Now let's take a look at some other hair. All deer hair has, see if you can see that right there, the little kind of almost like a down. 
if it's killed later on in the winter, the fibers will expand and become more hollow and they'll have more of this little down in it. So what we're really looking for, we're trying to find hair that's killed earlier in the season before it becomes more hollow. Now what you just have to do is look through different pieces of hair. Now look, here's an example right here. Look, look at that. Woo, very uneven. That just doesn't look good at all. Why? Well, squeeze it. It can't even be used for uh, spinning because it's so stiff. Again, uneven hair. Really not much use. A lot of fly tires have boxes full of that type of hair. Look, we've got another piece of hair here. Look at the white band. Look how light it is. This is fairly hollow hair. Now, if I was going to select this hair, you know, I'd like a little deer hopper, a little gray deer hopper. Boy, this could be the right hair. We're going to feel it. Hmm. Nice, soft feel. We can pull a couple of the fibers out. Look how easy it breaks apart. Well, that means it's going to flare. It's going to be an excellent little deer hair hopper. We have here a mule deer hide. Notice the gray color. About the only time a mule deer is brown is real early in the season. Towards the fall, it becomes gray. Now, besides understanding the qualities, of course, of the mule deer being, of course, more hollow, look at this right here, how, how hollow and soft it is. The reason is mule deer tend to uh, inhabit colder areas, so their hide tends to be more hollow, especially towards the back of the hide, right in the rump areas. Notice it has a lot less white than a, a white-tailed deer, but excellent hair for tying our flared hair flies, like our irresistible and our muddlers and our deer hair hoppers. Now, right down the middle of the back, on most any deer, it's very, very stiff, dark, and silky. On the flanks, it's soft towards the belly and becomes stiffer as it goes towards the back. As it moves towards the rump, again, a lot softer. This is hair from the leg. Notice how thinner diameter it is, and it's got the small, thin, white bands. Excellent little humpy hair. As we go more towards the neck, it becomes thicker, yet still has the small white bands. Again, excellent little hopper hair and small muddlers. The back has very stiff, silky hair, dark in color and very uneven. As we move towards the flanks, it becomes a little lighter and better humpy hair, especially for size 10 humpies. What does this mean to you? Well, you'll be able to look into a package of deer hair, pull it out, and look at the tips and the base and determine where this hair came from. You'll be able to select the type of hair you need for the fly. Obviously, if you have a whole hide and you get the right type of hide, a younger deer, maybe a doe or a young buck killed early in the season, you'll have hair useful for all different types of flies. If not, and you're buying it in small packages, you'll be able to look into the package and get a hair that is nice and even for humpies and hair with larger diameter for tying muddlers. Selecting deer hair is the first step in tying a very good deer hair fly. In the old days, we used to dye deer rump hair to get a variety of colors. Unfortunately, this hair was thick and would not work well for dry flies. Now, we've had a new opportunity. We can dye deer body hair. Take, for example, this chocolate brown hair. Look at the uh, variation in color from the tips to the base. Check out this orange. Boy, isn't that a beautiful color for tying stoneflies? But notice how the color varies from the base to the tip, sort of like a natural insect. If you look at a natural insect, its color is not the same all the way through the body. So if you're going to be tying flies such as humpies and wolves and some of the irresistibles, look at the variety of colors you can get by dyeing deer body hair. And some of the new processes really produce some excellent coloration. And notice the hair, how soft it is. It used to be that the old dyeing process would break the hair and make it brittle. Now we have, with our new process, the hair remains the same as if it was not dyed. Take, for example, this olive here. What a beautiful green drake imitation you could make out of this, especially if it was an extended body.
Now we can get some wild colors such as purple and chartreuse to use on saltwater flies and bass flies. But the important thing is the materials that we can get now, which are different. They're not as thick as it used to be when we dyed the rump hair. Now we get fine-grained deer hair that can be used on small dry flies. We've improved our materials. Now let's take a look at elk hair. Elk hair has some of the similar properties of deer hair. Although you can't spin the hair and get hair bodies, it does offer a great variety of hair for dry flies, such as elk hair caddis and some of the wolf patterns, and even on humpies. Take a look at some of the hair. You'll find a great variety in quality, especially from where in the hide it is taken. Like This is from along the mane and the hair is not as even and it's very wiry, can be used on tails for nymphs. One of the things about elk hair, where you receive the hair on the hide is where you're going to pick the hair for certain uses. For example, if you get it off the mane, uh, look at this. This is really more for tails on nymphs and some dry flies. You'd have to stack it because it's a little uneven, but very stiff and the coloration is excellent. You can get some great uh, variety of dark brown to black colors when using the mane. Long mane hair will work as a great quill body substitute. Now look at this hair from along the leg or the hawk. It's nice and even, uh, very stiff, and will work well for uh, wings and tails on wolf patterns and for very small humpies. Great coloration on this. Now let's take a look at some body hair. Now this is uh, off the flank towards the rump and this is excellent hair for your elk hair caddis uh, or for elk hair humpies. Also it works well on our stonefly imitations whether it's dyed or used naturally. Now we can bleach this elk hair and get some gingery like colors uh, very soft whites and it really dyes up very nice especially if you're looking for a more solid color. Where you bleach your elk hair from the part of the hide really makes a difference. Now this is elk hair that's bleached along the hawk. Very stiff, very short, and very even. And this is flank hair that's been bleached. Different purposes, some for elk hair caddis, other for winging material. With the new dyeing process, we can really get some excellent elk hair colors. On the right, we're looking at body hair that's been dyed. On the left, we're looking at some elk hair mane. Now, depending on whether we dye bleached hair, which will get a solid color like the red at the top of the screen, or we can get a variety of colors through just dyeing natural hair as in the orange. Excellent uh, stonefly color. Also look at purple. Now we can use that for our Alaskan patterns or our bass patterns. But the new dyeing process still lets the hair remain stiff. For example, this black elk hair can be used for tails or wings or for a wing on a black elk hair caddis. It still will remain stiff. Look at some of the colors, whether it be an off yellow or a chocolate brown or a red and olive. Perfect for your green drake imitations, whether it be extended body, a pair of drake, or just wings on a hair green drake imitation. How about red? Very stiff hawk hair to be used on hoppers and stonefly patterns. And this chocolate brown can be used on humpies and my favorite is elk hair on royal humpies for the back of that particular fly. The dyeing process on the elk and deer body hair was developed by Rocky Mountain Dubbing here in Wyoming and several other companies have followed suit. This variety of dyed materials are available in fly shops throughout the country.